Hello and welcome to Recyclist. It's August 25th, 2023. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and this is your weekly roundup of all the biggest news stories in the world of waste, gas, and energy presented by Diamond Scientific. First up, and as always, let's take a quick look at the stock market and across the world of waste, gas, and energy stocks are up over the past week. As of August 25th, 2023, Vanguard Energy is trading at a volume of 32,450. Atlantica Sustainable reached a volume of 57,791. Waste Management is currently trading at a volume of 288,415. Clean Energy Core is trading at 322,000. 576 and Chenier is currently trading at a volume of 444,577. But first up in the news, Coca-Cola is doing some really interesting things in the world of renewable gas. Liberty Coca-Cola Beverages is building what they're calling a quad generation system to generate electricity, run heating and cooling processes, and recover carbon dioxide to carbonate beverages. A first-of-its-kind project under construction at a 51-year-old Coca-Cola bottling facility in Elmsford, New York, is notable both for how it will improve the site's energy reliability and how it will capture carbon dioxide during production to carbonate Sprite, Coke, and Fanta products made there. This quad generation system is being installed by Clark Energy and will enable Liberty Coca-Cola Beverages' 21.5 acre site to generate its own electricity, while also powering heating and cooling processes such as creating steam for sanitation and chilling beverages before they are bottled. It will also support a new system that will let Liberty use self-recovered carbon dioxide to carbonate its beverages rather than trucking the gas in from elsewhere. Clark Energy CEO Jamie Clark said, quote, This complex technology will substantially reduce Liberty's carbon emissions through high-efficiency local energy production. With the benefits of the recent Inflation Reduction Act and increased price of CO2 globally, this provides many opportunities for carbon capture technologies in the United States. End quote. And up next, according to a new report from Axios, companies are currently on track to funnel $1.5 billion into new biogas systems in the U.S. this year. Renewable natural gas, which is procured from biogas, is set to play a significant role in helping companies hit net zero targets and achieve state mandates. The number of new biogas systems is rising and could jump even further next year, according to the American Biogas Council. The proliferation of these systems, which are mostly at wastewater treatment plants, farms, and landfills, is being boosted by incentives in the Inflation Reduction Act. The American Biogas Council's executive director, Patrick Surface, says the effects of the IRA on biogas has just started, saying, quote, Only now are a lot of developers deeply understanding the provisions enough to be able to integrate the IRA benefits into their development strategy, end quote. Investment in U.S. biogas systems started to soar in 2021 amid a land grab and consolidation push. And renewable natural gas is becoming steadily more attractive due to its use to be able to power industrial processes, buildings, and vehicles. And speaking of investments, Innovent Renewables announced its formation recently with a corporate mission to drive renewable energy forward by mitigating the global environmental challenge of waste tires. The company launched as a U.S.-based technology and operations company with a proprietary continuous pyrolysis technology that converts waste tires, plastics, and biomass into valuable fuels and chemicals. Each year, more than 1 billion tires are disposed of globally, with North America alone accounting for over 100 million of that. Decomposition of tires is slower than other waste, resulting in serious health hazards. And burning tires in pits or cement kilns is far more hazardous as it emits toxic emissions into the air. 
The exclusive pyrolysis technology is unique in that it's continuous, which is a much higher efficiency compared to batch processing. It utilizes the gas to preheat the tires, thereby making it a net zero energy process. During the process, valuable chemicals are recovered from the products, producing high quality fuels. The CEO of Innovent Renewables said, quote, We are thrilled to formally launch Innovent Renewables and plan to ramp up operations into early 2024. Four. Our investors, strategic advisors, and management team are fully committed to our success as we address the global challenge of waste tires. We firmly believe our proven process, deployed at scale globally, will have a huge positive impact on our climate and fill a clear environmental need. End quote. And just a reminder, Recyclist is brought to you by Diamond Scientific, an industry leader in gas analysis, instrumentation, and solutions. Make sure to visit them online at diamondsci.com. That's diamondsci.com. Or call them at 321-223-7500. Now let's go into some local headlines. Clearwater, Florida just spent $1.2 million toward getting the recycling back on track. Lawmakers are taking steps that officials say are important to gaining back the trust of its residents. The city council voted unanimously to authorize a one-year contract with a company to provide recycling services and give citizens a $20 credit on fees. This comes after the Solid Waste Department sent recyclables to the incinerator instead of sending them to be processed for half of last year. The city's Solid Waste and Recycling Director said it felt good to see city council members authorize the contract with Waste Connections to get its recycling program back on track. The city says the Solid Waste Department did not send recyclables for proper processing for several months. Since then, there's a new department administration in place with an online dashboard to track recycling shipments. The council also approved crediting residents for the fees they paid while items weren't being recycled. And Lebanon, New Hampshire is currently seeing an overhaul to their recycling programs and payment systems. Long considered one of the most environmentally progressive solid waste facilities in the state, the municipal landfill at Route 12A is launching a number of new waste diversion programs and changing the way residential users pay to dump their trash. Since the end of July, the landfill has accepted plastic grocery bags for recycling, and its partner Trex, a Virginia-based company, retrieves them and turns them into decking materials that serve as an alternative to wood. In addition to grocery bags, the plastics accepted at the landfill also include produce bags, newspaper sleeves, cereal box liners, and bubble wrap. The landfill just asks the plastics are brought in clean and dry. The solid waste facility also made permanent its textile recycling initiative. And moving to Florida, Brightmark RNG Holdings LLC, a joint venture between Chevron and Brightmark, announced the delivery of the first renewable natural gas from its Larson project in Okeechobee County. The Larson project is comprised of four lagoon anaerobic digesters located at Larson Family Farms. This marks the joint venture's inaugural RNG project in the state and builds on the extensive network of projects across the U.S. to produce dairy renewable natural gas for low carbon intensity transportation fuel. The Larson project captures methane from cow manure throughout the process of anaerobic digestion and converts it to RNG. Founder and CEO of Brightmark, Bob Powell, said, quote, This first gas milestone with Larson Family Farms is a testament to the power that a circular solution like anaerobic digestion has to dramatically reduce methane emissions and promote economic development in local communities. Our collaboration with Chevron and Larson demonstrates the continued growth of RNG as a market propelled by the agricultural and food waste industries, end quote. And lastly, in Fairfax County, Virginia, the Department of Public Works and Environmental Services is rolling out its first electric refuse truck to pick up residential trash and yard waste on routes throughout the city, a move that will save money and protect the environment. The new truck is another significant step in the county's operational energy strategy, which aims for governmental operations to be carbon neutral by 2040. Two charging stations have been installed at DPWES's Newington Collections Facility in Lorton, where the solid waste collections trucks are based. 
In addition to the new truck, DPWES already has four electric sedans in operation. The county itself has 50 fully electric vehicles already in operation across its fleet. And that has been your Recyclist News Update for August 25th, 2023, presented by Diamond Scientific. I've been your host, Eric Provost, and we'll see you back here next Friday for another episode of Recyclist. Thank you.